first of all, my presentation is, is called um, something, something for the hearing impaired. Improving communications for the hearing impaired. You cannot call the hearing challenged, hearing impaired. So this was the this was the the um, this was done on purpose. I, I specifically named it like that. I didn't know when I first started making the research for for this specific topic. I had no idea about anything. Uh, I don't have any relatives with such uh, issues. Uh, I myself don't have issues, or at least I I thought I didn't have any. So it was very difficult. I did all kinds of things to to make sure that I understand very well what this is all about. Now, the, the purpose of this presentation is just to open a discussion. So if anybody here is doing anything with asterisk uh, and accessibility features, please let me know and I will make sure I wrap up fast and I, I, I will give you the mic. Now, uh, let's start with first introducing myself. I've been with Zoeper for uh, uh, nearly 10 years already and uh, I'm mainly on the on the site that doesn't do any development. So I'm not a developer myself, I'm not technical, uh, not very technical, let's say. Uh, Joachim, on his other hand, is. Um, I work with developers, I make sure I don't hurt them too much, but sometimes it happens, <laughs> especially when I have difficult clients. So during the make of this presentation, no developers were hurt, maybe. I work with Zoa, you probably know him. <laughs> he's riding the Aster's car here. Um, he's the owner and the CTO of Zoeper, the software we're de developing together. But I'm much smarter and cooler. And also, I'm allowed to say this because he's not here. Uh, this is the story of the presentation. I will make sure that it goes really fast so that we have time. To, to have an actual interactive discussion here. Uh, I also prepared a small movie for you which contains little flashes of, uh, of uh, technology that we can together adopt. Здравейте! Аз съм Мира и съм родена в България. Истинското ми име е Добромира и означава за по-добър свят. Did you understand anything? No? You sure? What if I needed help? This thing here just means that my real name is that thing here. It's not Mira. Very few people know that. And I am born in Bulgaria. This is the Rose Valley in my country. But you didn't understand that. This is how people who cannot hear feel in, in most of their uh, daily activities. So. Without the help of other people, if I were not able to translate it, or if I didn't have a translator here, uh, I wouldn't be able to complete basic tasks, which is really, really a big problem. So advanced reside in mutual co collaboration. I already told you that before I started working on this project, I had no idea what I was doing. I'm not sure I have an idea what I'm doing right now, but we'll see. Uh, as I went on, I realized that I did not really have to do much, but all I had to do is think about the situation and apply what I already have in the Zoiper business, within the Zoiper features. So none of these features that we su supported as, as accessibility features were presented as such. So none of the people that I'm going to demonstrate in a minute were able to use, to use these features. Now, there are some breakthroughs. When I did my research, I found a few very interesting things. There are some breakthroughs that transform the lives of millions of people around the world. I will demonstrate them to you in a second. I will give you the first example. This is Aslan. It is a 3D printed hand, which is an, active, uh, an actual interactive translator. And it can be used in schools or in presentations such as this one to translate a few basic things in sign language. Uh, I forgot to tell you that Zoiper is not related to any of these projects, 
The reason I'm demonstrating them to you is just to make sure that um, you understand the purpose of this presentation is to work together in order to, to develop applicable solutions to solve the problem. Uh, then it's the brain to text. This is a very interesting project. I will demonstrate a similar project further on in the video that I prepared for you. Brain to text, uh, it uses simple algorithms and you would be able to, once it, is, it has advanced, you will be able to write words with your brain without using your hands or anything else. That was the short video. I just wanted to make a point here that there are a lot of people working on such projects and there are also other solutions from much bigger vendors <laughs> that, are, that can also be considered as accessibility uh, solutions. And in fact, if we combine all of this technology, we will end up offering uh, uh, a proposition that is applicable in any situation, whether you're deaf, blind, or you have missing parts, or you cannot move, or you're getting older, or you're way too young to understand certain technology, or you're way too old to understand certain technology. If we combine our, our efforts, we will be able to deliver uh, unified uh, communication options, which is my dream. Now, based on all, all of these things that you saw, you would think that we are already there, but in fact, we're not. The current state of the accessibility world is uh, sad. <laughs> There's really nothing perfect, nothing perfect yet, nothing perfectly available. We can change that. Now, in order to, to understand what it is uh, to be deaf, I will quickly go, go through this because I think I already made a point. Uh, there are some upsides, for example, if I want to concentrate next to my colleague who is extremely loud or I'm working uh, next to a colleague who's on the phone at, at the whole time, if I'm deaf, I will have some advantage there. I will not be distracted. Uh, I will also be able to relax if I'm on my balcony and having my coffee and all the cars downstairs are, are bothering me if I'm not deaf. But there are a lot of downsides. What if my gate changes on the airport? It's first announced on the speakers. I would need to really put all my attention into looking where, my gate, where, where the people in front of the gate are going, which is a big problem. What if I'm on a crosswalk and the car that's approaching me didn't see me and is talking and I, I can't hear it? I might lose my life there. It is a complicated situation. The world is built around the hearing and the seeing. It is not entirely comfortable for people with challenges. And this is, this is a problem. Deafness on its own, it's not a problem. Uh, in most countries, especially in my country, and in Europe mostly, the deaf society is a closed society. It's a completely separate cultural society. Selling to this society is uh, uh, relatively difficult. Uh, entering the society is difficult. Understanding it is difficult. The other way around is <laughs> exactly the same. Now, there are some, some situations in which the two societies are similar. We simply don't understand each other. Even if we're just hearing, and I'm, I'm trying to, to explain things to the hearing, they might not understand me for many, many reasons. The same goes if I'm trying to explain something to that person or a deaf person is trying to, to explain something to me. Now, there's a difference between visual and non-visual communication. The sign language, for example, is entirely visual, visual communication. Uh, the difference is that with visual communication, we need to be emotion, emotionally involved. The second important topic is the different situations require a different approach. In case, you're, uh, in case you would adopt my idea that we need to provide accessibility uh, solutions in the future, futures, you would need to make sure that uh, you provide different solutions for the different situations. It is important to also understand that hearing loss affects uh, Communication, cognition, behavior, social, emotional development, academic outcomes, and vocational opportunities. 
And the joke is on me. Deaf people can do anything except hear. So you will think that you're able to choose whether to adopt accessibility features or not to adopt accessibility features. The answer is yes and no, is yes and no. Why? There's no obligatory standard that regulates accurately and independently how much of accessible our stuff should be. Uh, in G I know that in GUS there is. You will be able to correct me in a minute, but it is old and outdated, and it's up to us to change this. Uh, you're still free to decide whether you would adopt accessibility features to a certain point, but my opinion is that if you don't adopt accessibility features or if you don't market accessibility features, you will soon be out of business. Here's the statistics. If you are using Facebook, I am personally using Facebook. I am not too much of a Twitter fan, but I will be because apparently everybody here is. Uh, if 0.4% of the US population is deaf, and if you averagely have 360 Facebook friends, you should have at least 1.4 deaf person in your Facebook, within your Facebook friends. I will make a survey, and I will, I will check this. Well, I don't. 5% of the world population is uh, hearing challenged or deaf. That makes 360 million people. I received a question during this slide in, on a previous conference, how we're going to monetize this among, among such a small amount of affected people. Well, in fact, one billion people are affected by noise, noise pollution, and I know that my hearing is going down. We might all be going deaf. Now, why you would want your apps and services accessible? I will quickly go through, the, uh, through this. Accessibility is becoming a requirement slowly. I noticed that Apple, implement, uh, Apple are trying to push towards accessibility. They released a video last year that's very interesting on how to implement accessibility for iOS. And we're applying it within Zoiper. So it is becoming a standard. It's up to us to, to push even further. Accessibility can be funded. This was the question I received, but I'll explain when I wrap up. Uh, there are many options to fund accessibility. You can see them on this slide. But my suggestion is mostly not to think about, about funding accessibility as the, the outcome of accessibility, let's say the money, will, will come later on. Now, accessibility will provide you with a mobile recurrent pay payable and patient user stream. Once you enter uh, the, the society with a solution, which is highly needed at the very moment, you will be able to, to, to be the, pretty much the only one providing the solution. Accessibility will increase your business awareness. I like to say something. It sounds like a cliche, but it's my favorite thing. The most sustainable business is the business with social value. And you know that there are many examples here. Now, how to provide accessibility features without doing anything? I have nine steps here. The first two overlap. First of all, check your current features. I'm sure that at least 50% of your current features can be presented as accessibility features. At least this is the case with Zoiper. And you should recognize these existing features as accessibility features. Then prioritize additional features for a broader audience. When you start implementing additional features, just have this little thing in mind. Does it serve any accessibility purpose? Then research. Uh, I, would, I also like to say that competition is an outdated and unsustainable concept. Uh, if a solution already exists, it's really good for you because you will be able to, to get the good and the bad out of the existing solution, but also you will be able to partner with the existing party. The only real problem that I will not discuss is the legal matters and the patents, but if you're able to wrap it up properly and uh, you go through the, uh, you go through the uh, specifications, the requirements that are in fact as we said, old and outdated. You shouldn't have any legal problems. Another thing is the funding, but you can reach to other parties, such as 
Zoeper to request development time contribution. Then open source, I'm not allowed to say anything here because Zo will not like it. He doesn't like open source. Actually, he does, but he doesn't want to open source Zoeper, but I am very much uh, pro open source. I think that these solutions should be open source and accessible to everybody. Then make propositions and not solutions. I tend to say solutions all the time, but no one needs fixing. So in fact, make propositions, not solutions. And then the, the final thing that I'm doing today is raise awareness. There are practical suggestions. This is the most important part of the, of the presentation. I would like to, again, make a point. Imagine that you're deaf and your, and your credit card got stolen. Somebody is making use of your credit card to buy drones or minutes. And you want to contact your uh, bank to block the card. There are two little options that you can do. In the US, you might be lucky enough to be in a state where you will be able to uh, reach a call center that is going to help you. In Europe, or in my country, you, you're not lucky because you lost all your money. There are only a few options that you can go for, and all of them are, are not fast enough, not reliable enough. You will never feel secure enough to go with them. That's why I'm going to discuss here a situation with call centers when we're trying to connect a deaf user with a deaf agent, a deaf user with a hearing agent, and why not a hearing agent with a deaf user? There are other combinations that I'm not going to discuss. Uh, again, there's no one perfect solution, but we can together create a perfect solution. Now, when I'm trying to improve the lives of the hard of hearing, within Zoeper and within a small open source project that we are working on the site uh, with, uh, with, we uh, push wideband audio because it, it extends the frequency range for the, range for the audio signals, which gives a better chance for the hearing challenge to, to hear. Then we use noise reduction to remove all the white noises and the surrounding noises. And using an equalizer, which is generally a big issue, uh, we uh, wrote our own equalizer in Zoeper. But what we did is a little bit more than that. We created this application. Actually, a Zoeper employee was inspired by uh, one of my struggles in the office to, to deliver an application for the hearing challenge, and he decided to develop his own. In fact, it's a very simple application. It's open source, and it is just a step forward uh, towards implementing this within Zoeper itself. What the application really is, it's just an advanced equalizer. We call it the wave amp, and it modifies the decibels and the hertz for op optimal hearing. It uses standard algorithms. It is similar to a hearing aid, and it can be applied directly to the server. The algorithms can be. Now, let's see if this is going to play. It's, a, uh, it's a, an audio file. It's a little bit low. Oh well. Now, this audio file presents, explains how normal hearing sounds like, and then the next audio file will show you how, um, uh, how a hearing cha uh, challenged person hears uh, the audio. So let's see if it's going to play again. Please. The ship was torn apart on the shark reef. Sickness kept him home the third week. This is the first time it works. No. The ship was torn apart on the shark reef. Sickness kept him home the third week. This is how the hearing loss sounds like. You can barely hear it. Now, this, these are actually audio files recorded through the wave amp. This is what the application does. The ship was torn apart on the Sharp Reef. Sickness kept him home the third week. It's much better than the first, fly, uh, first file, too. So this is a, a visual explanation on what happened um, uh, 
what happened just now. I'll go back to, back to the previous slides. So this is how normal hearing looks like. Normal, if there's such thing as normal. Then here we have a simulated loss of hearing. This is the, the red part being the portion that the a hearing challenged person can hear. And here in the middle, we uh, present visually what the application actually does. So the red part here is the uh, amplification of the, of the application. Now to go back to the application, what it does is you can use an existing audiogram or you can make your own through the application. You can either upload it to the application if you already ex have an existing audiogram or make your own. It will start a test with eight to 10 questions uh, displayed on each ear to check how much of a hearing loss you have, if you have any. And this is the audiogram. This is how it looks like. This is an audiogram with mild hearing loss. Then I explain this part. Uh, this is only one step, uh, as, I, as I explained, towards what actually uh, we can do. It is extremely simple. It is still under development, but it, we can make it better. If we're trying to connect a deaf user to a deaf agent, this is relatively easy because, as I said, it already exists. We can use video features. I have a small requirement here. I am hoping that soon I will see video cues supported in Asterisk. And um, what we can propose here, since uh, the, the deaf and the hearing challenge will not be able to hear Alison's beautiful voice, <laughs> we uh, have a suggestion that we can use visual IVRs where instead of uh, please click, la qu quick click one for sales and two for support, we can display it as an actual selectable button for the ones who cannot hear. Uh, of course, in this case, both parties need to support video calls. <laughs> Uh, which requires a video call center. Then we can use chat, which is slow. It's also, it also provides for misunderstandings and it's not nearly applicable. Most of the call centers don't support it unless it's an actual customer service uh, center. Then we can use chat and video, which is a hybrid solution, but again, it's quite slow. Then we can connect a deaf user to a hearing agent. This is the most difficult thing that you can try to achieve. Uh, we're still trying. <laughs> you can use caption services, again, extremely old and outdated, or various is again, extremely old and outdated. We need to do something here. We can use, for example, video with wider control over the camera. We were proposing to be able to zoom in, for example, towards more of, of this part of the person so that the, the hearing challenge can also, uh, and the deaf can actually lip sync, uh, lip read, sync, lip read. We can use higher frames per second and higher resolutions. We can use several cameras as presented in the previous video. Uh, we can also use emotion detection to aid. Uh, I love emotion detection. It is a facial expressions and tone de detection. Some of the hardware cameras already support it, where uh, according to the, to the facial expressions of the agent and the, the tone and the voice of the agent, labels can be displayed next to the face of the agent to express what uh, emotion the, the agent is currently uh, feeling. Can husbands buy that for their parents? I think they should. <laughs> I think they should or we can do automatic sign language interpreter together. Now, this is the end of the presentation. And I was hoping that there are people here who are implementing accessibility features. And if there are any, either come over or shout out loud that you exist, because this is the, the time when questions and discussions are going to happen. Is there anybody implementing or using accessibility features? Not so much technology-wise, but there's a great tax credit out there that you don't know about. It. It's a $5,000 tax credit to um, provide technology or other solutions for the hearing impaired or the, any, any impairment. So when I sell a phone system to a small business, 
there, uh, because we have HD voice and, uh, and, and, and uh, better hearing for the, for the hearing aids and such, they were able to get a 5,000 credit on a phone system, which could be half the cost of the system or a third or something like that. So it's wonderful. I would think it would pay for things like this as well. Good. There's a website. Uh, give me your card. I'll send you the link. Um, it's, it's really easy. We put in all our proposals, and most of our customers take advantage of it. But it's limited to 30 employees or fewer from a much larger company can take advantage of it. 30 full time. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. On your choice of website, I don't see too much on the accessibility. Yes, this is only my third talk. Um, and we implemented the WAVE um, two months ago. So it's relatively new. It is just a, uh, we are going to implement it together within Zoiper. So the standard Zoiper will have the, the features of the WAVE AMP. You will be able to, to adjust each, each uh, speaker in your ear in case you're uh, hearing challenged. We did something similar for the for uh, visual challenges for older elderly people, let's see. Uh, but uh, the new version doesn't include it yet. I left some business cards there. At the back of the business card, there's the QR code. If you scan it, you will have early access to the newest Zoiper. It has HTML5 interface. Also, everybody attending Astrocon receives a, receives free Zoiper licenses of the business. Uh, business edition of Zoiper that is actually paid. So, so just drop an email to any of the at Zoiper.com addresses and you will receive them. But this is just the first step. We're still um, looking how we can improve the life of, of uh, challenge. So any ideas are welcome. Any partnership suggestions are welcome. The Wave Up is just a, a spin-off project at the moment. We have thought about doing something even more, <laughs> some, something even braver, uh, but it requires a lot of uh, development, uh, which at the moment we, uh, we cannot meet. It's the end of the fiscal year, and all our cl clients <laughs> are trying to get their budget straight. But we're, we will try to do something uh, to convert sign to speech uh, if we're able to. <laughs> Because sign language in each country is different, this uh, is a big problem. We were thinking about using uh, ISL, but it's very limited. It's not enough. So we will see. It requires a lot of, a lot of development and investment. But we are open for partnerships there. If, if I could just make one, one comment. I, one of my best friends is a sign language interpreter. And his biggest frustration, specifically with technology, is there's been a lot of technology companies that have invested in in helping you know, people with, with disabilities and then they go out of business because they haven't figured out that, that, that sustainable model. And he said to me, he says, Jared, you're being an open source. You should, you should tell these companies they should do it as open source because that way the, the, the good continues to happen even if they go out of business. Yes, very good point. That's why I insist on open source here as well. And also, it's good if uh, you're if you're in already in in the business of communication, which you are. You are already able to offer existing uh, features. You don't really need to do anything. You're already to promote them as such, and it can only benefit your business. It cannot harm your business in any way. Also, all of the new hype things that we're using, well, technically they're accessibility softwares. <laughs> so we can just adopt adopt these technologies and actually use them for something good. Okay. That's it. Now we can enjoy a coffee break, I think. <laughs> <laughs>